Welcome to Select Med Tutors Quick Question Review, QQR. Today, we'll go through a classic USMLE Step 1 acid base vignette. Let's read the question together. A 32 year old male is brought to the emergency room. He is obtunded, and the physician is unable to obtain a history. His friend is with him and tells the physician that the patient was depressed because he had broken up with his girlfriend two nights ago and had consumed a large amount of antifreeze along with some unknown pills 12 hours ago and then began vomiting. Shortly thereafter, according to his friend, the patient lost consciousness. On physical exam, the patient is minimally responsive, blood pressure is 110 over 80 and pulse is 90. Pupils are two millimeters bilaterally and symmetric and respirations are eight per minute. Which of the following represents the most likely set of his arterial blood gas values? This kind of USMLE question can seem daunting at first, but if we use a systematic stepwise approach, we can tackle problems as seemingly complex as this one. So let's approach this question in a stepwise fashion. Step one, always read the question at the end of the vignette first so that you are sure what is being asked. Notice that this is an acid-based question. Step two, now let's look at some of the keywords in the vignette that may help us arrive at the correct answer. What's important here? First, we note that the person is uptunded, which means that he is nearly unconscious. Next, we note that he drank a large amount of antifreeze and began vomiting. So what is antifreeze and what does drinking antifreeze cause? As you may recall, antifreeze is ethylene glycol, which is toxic and often consumed by alcoholics who cannot find alcohol. Once ingested, it is quickly converted to acid byproducts. Despite the fact that the patient began vomiting shortly after ingestion, we can make a reasonably educated guess that some of the ethylene glycol reached the circulation, and this would lead us to believe that he may have a metabolic acidosis. Next, from the vignette, we see that the patient not only drank ethylene glycol, but that he also consumed some unknown pills. Also of note on the physical exam is the fact that the patient's pupils are smaller than normal and that the respiratory rate is low. What can cause these findings? In theory, simply drinking enough ethylene glycol can cause respiratory depression, but would not cause small pupils. So what can a person ingest that would cause both pupillary constriction and respiratory depression? Perhaps opiates? And would opiate ingestion also be consistent with small pupils and respiratory depression? Yes. Recall that opiates like morphine, methadone, and intravenously injected heroin can cause respiratory depression and pupillary constriction. Step 3. We quickly now review in our heads what we have so far. It would appear that the patient should have a metabolic acidosis from the ethylene glycol ingestion as well as a superimposed respiratory acidosis from the opiate ingestion. Step four, which of the following arterial blood gas profiles will be consistent with this clinical picture? Let's use the process of elimination. Since the patient is acidotic, we can safely rule out the answer choices with pHs that are not in the acidic range. Hence, we can rule out answer choices B, E, and F. Additionally, we can also rule out answer choice D, since the pH is not acidic enough to be consistent with a combined metabolic and respiratory acidosis. So now we are left with answer choices A and C. And as in the real USMLE, it gets a little tricky here, because both answer choices reveal significantly acidotic pHs. So which one do we pick? If we look at the PCO2, which of course is the arterial blood gas value that we should look at immediately after looking at pH, we see that both answer choices, A and C, seem consistent with respiratory acidosis. However, 
we must also simultaneously look at the other parameters in this arterial blood gas to find the set that best fits this scenario. And while the PCO2 is similar in answer choices A and C, the bicarbonate is within normal limits in answer choice C, and this would not be consistent with a metabolic acidosis. Hence, we are left with answer choice A, which shows a low bicarbonate and is consistent with a metabolic acidosis with a superimposed respiratory acidosis. As you can see, by following a careful stepwise approach, we were able to tackle even this challenging USMLE question. I want to thank you for watching this quick question review from Select Med Tutors. Select Med Tutors combines the latest in evidence-based test preparation with outstanding MD tutors. Our services can be found at www.selectmedtutors.com.